Welcome to another mother dude, I can't even talk. Welcome to another podcast of the current situation of Manchester United. In this video podcast, I'm gonna be talking about the latest Manchester United um news relating to injured players, especially that we have a game on Saturday again, Southampton away from home. So I'll be talking about, you know, the build up to that game, you know, the players that are out, the players, you know, the atmosphere of Manchester United. And for you guys who are new to this channel, I am Mr. United that brings you the latest Manchester United news, update on players, previews, match reactions, that type of stuff, and I do other content as well. So in this video podcast, <coughs> um, seeing that the, the international break is finished, the Manchester United players today have trained and we're looking forward to our fourth game of the season in the Premier League against Southampton on Saturday away from home. Now, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, so I'm going to bring you up to speed, but we're 14th. No, this is not the early, the, the season just started, so we're not, you know, we're not going to, you know, get being out of shape over it. But we're in, for, what is something worth mentioning because we're in 14th place in the table. That is like we're almost in you know that dangerous zone of relegation and we have lost our last two games in the Premier League and we have won the first game by a 1-0 win. Um never it's not a convincing season so far but we can turn the corner. Um so yeah we have a game against Southampton and like I said bro we're fourteenth and our next two games are away from home. So this is not going to be an easy feat. This is not going to be an easy two weeks for Manchester United. We know that we have the tendency to struggle against sides away from home. Especially, hold on, especially when sides are looking to clamor up their defense and play a low block. So, in the upcoming two weeks, yes, we have a game against Crystal Palace after the game we play our way to Southampton. Then we'll play a Crystal Palace away from home. So it's going to be quite uh, a game of nerves, bro. We have to see how far this squad has improved, if it has improved at all. And, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, and I am not talking about the signings that were made. Again, signings can be made, but if there is no unique set of play that have been beaten up for years that can implement, that, 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 that can, um, you know, be the focal point of this side where we can if we can play proper football then what are we doing bro we're just making signs but there is no unique effective self play to put you on display on the football pitch no there's a few things that um that have been in the news late that i want to address um fabio capilla was um i guess i could say criticize, criticizing Joshua Xerxes, based on, you know, because apparently he is struggling, although he has just played his third game for Manchester United, he's struggling. He's not struggling. He's not adapting to the Premier League as yet. You have to give him time, but he's not struggling. But he's been, he's, he was basically criticizing Xerxes, saying that he's playing with the Syria R uh, intensity, like he's playing the Italian intensity in the Premier League. Now, we know that from both perspectives of 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 uh, the league, Syria R uh, and Premier League, it's no contest that the Premier League is way more intense than Syria R. Uh. There's a reason why Syria R uh, is known as a retirement league, or it doesn't have the intensity it once had back in the nineties. This me it does is is not it's not it's not nearly as intense as the Premier League. So what Fabio Capella is basically saying is that after watching him, I guess he's see of course he's seen him for him to be critical of Xerxes. That Xerxes is playing with this um this Italian intensity which is not up to the levels of the Premier League. Now again, duh, he came from the the Syria R. He's not going to just click in motion like that and start play to the levels of the Premier League it's going to take time so of course he's going to need time to adapt to the Premier League he's not just he's a he's a I don't, I don't think I think that criticism is unnecessary because of course he needs time to adapt to the Premier League <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> I mean, I could give a few examples right now, but I can't think of for the top of my brain. But the, the, the point is this, man. If a striker came from a different league and he's signed to a Premier League side and he's going to play in the Premier League, of course he's going to need time to adapt to the, the football of the Premier League. You see me? He, he, there's, a, there's a good chance it's going to take him a good amount of time to adapt. So, of course... You know, um, his game against Liverpool, I guess he's more, he was, he got that criticism from that game because in that game, which was his first start, by the way, um, he had chances where he should have, he should have scored, but he didn't score them. Rashford gave him a good cross and um, someone else gave him a good ball and he didn't score them. He missed those chances. Yeah, but, but when it comes down to the adaptation of the Premier League, you have to give him time to adapt to the Premier League. It's no, it's no, it's, I mean, that's like a door. So I don't even know where the 78 year old uh, coach named Fabio Capella is, th- is talking about. Of course, he's going to need time to adopt to the Premier League. That's like a given. It's because the Premier League, bro, I mean, it's, it, there's a, there's a reason why a lot of, per, a lot of players have not adopted to, rep- to the Premier League. And we could go down the list, but we don't have any time for that today. But the point is that there are a lot of players that have, that are good players, you know, very good players that came to the Premier League and didn't make the cut in the Premier League because they couldn't adapt to the competitive, intensive nature of the Premier League. And they, they shipped out and went to a different club. They went to a different league in a different, uh, at a different club. So, yeah, I hope that um, Xerxes does adapt because I believe he has the, the, the size to play in the Premier League. I just hope that he has the intensity to play in the Premier League because, man, when you get the ball, bro, it's gonna just gonna be like flies and mango seed. It's, they're just gonna swarm you. The defenders are gonna swarm you. They're gonna press you. Is that like the, the, in Syria? Ah, uh, where you get the ball and like ten seconds later, the, the defender is still trying to catch up with you. Like that, that that's not gonna cut it in the Premier League. So I get where he's coming from, but I, I believe the criticism is still not necessary. Because, of course, you need time. That's like, duh, to adapt. Everything up in his press conference today, Um, he was saying that in relation, there are some injuries. Like, Mason Mount is still out with injury. He said that Rasmus Hoyland and Luke Shaw are not viable candidates to be um, selected for next for the next game, which is against Southampton. So, yeah, they're still out with injury. And, yeah, so... We do have players that are out with injury, and that's quite worrying because the season just started. I mean, we have quite a big squad, so it's not really that we have to be worried about the players. But you know, when we have crucial players missing out, you know, that's always that's always a worry for me. But he, this is what he said: He said Rasmus Holland and Luke Shaw they are progressing very well but are not ready for this game those are the exact words from eric ten Hag. no i was just talking about manchester united having a game against uh southampton give me a second i'm getting distracted let me just click on something right quick we have a game against southampton now southampton have been out of the premier league for seasons they are now promoted back to the premier league and even before they got relegated out of the Premier League, Southampton has always been a side to look out for, especially away from home. So we have to see how Manchester, everything hugs Manchester United come, comes at this game. We, we are aware that they will be playing a low block. We know that so when we play against sides, especially away sides, when we're going away to play against away sides, they always implement a low block so that they don't concede through passes. So we know that Manchester United don't are not very effective at breaking down low block defences. We know that. What Manchester United is known for is being very good on the break when we're counter-attacking. That is our main with ours. That is how we make our name at Manchester United, counter-attack. But when that defence is, is not giving us space, though, 
when the defense is kind of, you know, shriveled up, more congested, more conservative, that is where Manchester United turn a fool because we don't know how to break down the defensive. Bruno Fernandes, as good as a midfielder, Bruno Fernandes, he, that's, he, he's not... He's not the best at breaking down defenses. He's not. He's not going to be like a Kevin De Bruyne. He's not that type of mid. He's not a Bernardo Silva. His own compatriot. His own countryman. And these sides, these players can break down defenses. Yeah, I mean, they play for Pep Guardiola. So what do you expect? But yeah, Manchester United don't have the midfielders to break down a low block. So this is a worrying game. And see, in one aspect, I could say it is a problem. If there's one caveat, if there's one issue why we should have um, not sold Scam of Tommy is because of this thing, same thing I'm talking about. is because when we're playing against low blocks, hold on, when we're playing against low blocks, we have to go to the plan B. We, if we can't break down the low blocks, we have to play, we have to cross balls into the box. Now, this is where Xerxes is, necess- is needed to score goals because he's a big lad. He's very physical by the looks of him. I mean, he played in the, in, the, in, the, in the Italian league, so you have to be a bit physical, of course. And Scott McTominay's um, uh, uh, area of threat could be a threat to the opposition if we kept him. You see me? So you could say in one instance, it's a mistake. I'm playing devil's advocate, so hear me out. It's a mistake that we are selling Mark Scott Mc... We sold Scott McTominay past tense. We sold Scott McTominay to Napoli. So, man, I don't even know what to say. I'm just caught or I didn't do. <laughs> but yeah, we have, we have, um, you could say in one aspect, we, we, we should have kept Mac- because of the same reason here. So, we need the area of threat. This is why Mourinho was hell bent on using Marwan Fellaini in the last 15 to 10, uh, 15, minutes of the game is because if the result is not going as it should if they're def- if the opposition defense is very you know defensively sound not giving us space and this is where we look to marwan fellaini this is why he was effective now we have xerxes we have uh, maguire is an area of threat and scamotam is a very good area of threat, but we sold him so the we're going to see how Everything is going to come at this game away from home. Because this is the guy you sold. And if you're selling a profile of Scum of Tommy's statue, that's a statement you're trying to make. You're trying to say that, okay, we do not want Manchester United to be known for just playing ball into the box and scoring headers. This is, me. This is not the profile of play that we are trying to portray. And understand this because it's Manchester United, not Stoke City in 2010. So I understand that you want to make a statement that you want to play football on the ground or pos- be position based that type of thing. That's why I say that's why I say an Ergate who is more of a sound proper midfielder than Scott McTominay. But when you come, this is the Premier League. This is not in La Liga. This is not is me uh in League A, the French league. This is the Premier League, and we're, when we're playing against low sides in Premier League, they're not. They can't play the Spanish football. I mean, even Pep Guardiola sides somewhat struggle in breaking down these sides, although they eventually break down and they start scoring goals, you know. The water fountain has just been released and the water is coming up. But this is Manchester United with all those players. So my point is that it's going to be quite a game against Southampton and even against Crystal Palace because... Manchester United, man, we we don't have the best records against Crystal Palace, how we at all, is me. So these are in the next two weeks, Manchester United is going to have quite of a test to play against Southampton and Crystal Palace. You have to see how we are as a side to break these sides down. You have to see if we are good enough to do that. And I want to see if there is an alternative plan everything I'm causing his locker to break down the defense. If you've been watching up until if you've been watching up until this uh, point in time, leave your comments on in the comment section. What's your thoughts, man? And I haven't even gotten to the preview as yet, but these are food for thought 
thoughts that we should entertain. Manchester United, man. We know so we can break down sides like that. We the only way the only way we can break down sides is if we are given out a space or a good amount of space. This is why we don't really struggle against the top tier sides because they always give us space. But the worrying thing for Manchester United, as I've stated in the past, is when we're playing against low small sides, especially away from home, are we able to break them down? Are we able to neutralize their defense? Are we able to I'm not saying that we have to spit, you know, spit side them defense like it's or it's or something, but are we, do we have the finesse in our midfield or in our attackers to break down the defense? Because honestly, bro, we don't have the football IQ to do that. So I'm very, I'm very, uh, I'm, I am very, I'm, I'm, I'm very anxious to see how we play against Southampton come on Saturday. Let me know your thoughts, man. Like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell as well. You can be notified, man. I notice that some of you guys are watching, but you're not subscribing. Subscribe to the channel. Like and subscribe. Leave your comments in the comment section. Let me know what you really think. Is me? This is really worrying. Cause yourself, Scamac Tomney, and Scamac. This is the type of games we need Scamac Tomney for. Like he's like like yeah, bro. This is the type of games like. No, you may uh no, I'm a hypocrite somewhat because I stated that we should have sold Scott McTominay. I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> I said we should have sold uh sold Scott McTominay. We should have sold 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 Scott McTominay because he's just a passenger now midfield. But a game like this, this is where he's effective, especially in the last fifteen minutes of a game. If the game is drawn or we're losing. Look at the game we played against Bedford at home. We're losing 1 0 at home. We should not be losing 1 0 at home in the first place. But when Scott McTominay came on, he changed the game. He scored two goals for us to win that game. So, yes, this Bridgen had his usages, but he should not be starting. That's the problem that I had with everything. He should not be starting. You don't start Scott McTominay. But yeah, I don't want to get long-winded about but it's something that we need to discuss, man, because I'm not going to be soothing over no no game where we can we can potentially lose or more so draw. This this you could say this has a draw written all over. We don't have any room to be drawing no games. The expectation for this season is to at least get top four. And at least win the, 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 the Euro League. The Euro, the Europa League. Yeah, so if we want to um get top four we have to proactively not lose games away from home or get convincing results away from home is me yeah so we have to see how this game goes bro we have to see how this game goes um another thing the 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 the, the, the Christian Ronaldo's criticism of Man United situation brushed off by everything else so I saw Everything uh basically stating in a short clip on Facebook that um you know I guess Ronald I didn't watch the video but I guess Ronald was basically saying that everything uh, doesn't have it in him to be successful man you know some 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 man I don't even understand um but he was basically saying that Manchester United won't be successful some man other. But Eric Tang was basically saying he's far from Manchester United and that's his that's his opinion. Of course, it's op is his opinion, but in one essence, he's not really wrong because based on based on the two seasons you've been here, bro, yes, you won two trophies, but in terms of the football, in terms of, let us not forget the results from last season. Let us not allow our FA Cup win to overcloud the disastrous games we had last season away, both away and at home. Let us not forget that we broke some horrific records at last season like i can't leave it off we woke, we broke some records man i'm looking swole man look at that wow looking swole yeah we, lo we, lo we lost some 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 very crucial games last season bro last season so let us not act as if you know but yeah here's a point 
although he's, he's, he's coming from a petty perspective because he doesn't like everything else. But he has a point. Yes, Manchester United are not um, successful as of right now. Excuse me. Um, should I get into the preview today or tomorrow? You know what? Let me do the preview in this year, man. So, um, yes, we're playing against Southampton come on Saturday. Now, I basically gave you some morsels of information as relates to us playing away to Southampton. But we're 14th. If we draw this game, if it's a nil little draw, we're going to probably stay 14th or go a bit further to 15th place. If we lose this game, we're not going to be in a good position. Well, again, I know this is our fourth. I know this is just our fourth Premier League game. But we cannot, we have to be proactive, bro. We cannot, we, we can't say, okay, you know, it's just a fourth game. We'll bounce back on our, we bounce back on our feet. And when it's like in March, the second week in March, we're like eighth place trying to catch in into top six or top four. And we can't because the other sides above us are winning their games and they're not slowing down. So we need to win this game away from home. We need to win the game away from home against Crystal Palace. And we're not playing against Crystal Palace in this game. But like I mentioned, in the next two weeks, we're going to see how Manchester United, how competent Manchester United is playing away from home. We lost to Crystal Palace last season away from home. Do I need to remind you guys of the performance of Casemiro, well, Casemiro is at Manchester United as a whole, but his performance showed how Manchester United was poor in that game. And I don't need to go over that. You see me? So, we need to see how we're going to combat that in our next two games. Now, Southampton, I believe we'll beat them. Maybe not convincingly, but I believe we'll beat Southampton on the, uh, on the, on the game day on Saturday. My starting level is Onan in goal. Dalo at right, hold on, not Dalo at right back. Dalo left back and um, Missouri at right back. That's the right choice. Centre back is Mar Lissandra Martinez with um, Her Maguire. Yeah. I don't want to be seeing the light starting right now, bro. Let us not throw him into the deep end. In my opinion, as I've stated in the match reaction, to our loss against Liverpool that when we, that if Maguire started against Liverpool maybe we have still lost but we shouldn't we wouldn't have leaked those mistakes that we did against Liverpool because Maguire definitely played against Liverpool he has experience but we just throwing uh, what what delight into the game now I don't believe that man let him stay on the bench a bit let's just work him into the game slowly so yeah, I'm going with Maguire and Lissandro Martinez. And of course, I was at left back, as I mentioned, Diogo Dalot. Now in midfield, I am wondering if um, Ergotti will be starting. Because Casemiro for the last games has not been at the races at all. Let me say this about uh, Casemiro. Casemiro has done a lot of things in his, in his football career. More specifically with Real Madrid. I think a lot of persons forget that uh, Casemiro was one of the best defensive midfielders, if not the top five, top ten midfielders in the world from at least 2016 to 2022. One of the best, like, you know. And we got this guy at the back end of his career from Real Madrid. Now, here's the, red for, here's the first red flag, and this goes back to what I said about him. Or signing Varane back in 2021. You may think that we got one out. You may think that we got one over on uh, Real Madrid after signing Varane and Casemiro. But the skeptical side of me, my antennas went up because I'm saying, well, who is it that a club of Real Madrid's Real Madrid this Real Madrid, man? I can't even talk. Well, who is it that a club of Real Madrid's standing? Is selling both. They sold Sergio Ramos and Varane in the same transfer window. That was their best centre back for the past five years and over. Ever since himself, Pepe. 
and FC lose two center backs in the same transfer window. Ramos went to PSG and Varane came to Manchester United. So when he signed for Manchester United Varane back in 2021, I'm saying, yeah, we get him from Real Madrid, but I think Real Madrid tried to play it. I think Real Madrid played us because they knew that Varane was, was void, was, was full of injuries and he was not the same defender that he once was that he once was period it's a full stop that's why we signed him you see me now we signed Casemiro person thing oh yes man we signed one of the best defensive midfielders in the world he's going to stabilize the midfield he's going to be our best center center defensive midfielder since Nemanja Matic and it hasn't proved that way no in his first season you could say he was reasonably good in his first season but last season and the start of this season, we're no, we're coming to the gripes of reality that Casemiro, at the age that he is right now, and where he is in his fo- in his football career, he's past it. That is not a secret. He's a he's a past it player. He's no longer the Casemiro of old when he was back at Real Madrid. Now we, I'm not saying that he's a completely garbage player. He still has his strengths. But they can tell that the intense going back to the intensity of the Premier League, the intensity of the Premier League has gotten to him. And he's suffering because of it. Isn't me? So I agree with the sign of Ergate. Ergate and Kobman in the midfield can can you know get get the wheel rolling again. Customer can come in, can be substituted in the game in the second half. So going back to the starting eleven, after me saying all of that. I still believe Casimir will be starting. <laughs> See that work. So yeah, I believe Casimir will be starting. Although I don't want. I don't. See, here's the thing: if you go start Casimiro, take him off by the sixtieth minute. Take him off by the sixtieth minute. You know this is is his stamina is going to wane at some point. Casimiro right now should not be playing full game. He should be substituted off, particularly if he's having a woeful game. Yeah, if he's having a woeful game, substitute him by the 50th minute or 60th minute, man. 55th minute, not 50th minute, that's kind of a disrespect. But I mean, if he's having that much of a bad, bad game, that day. Hey, when you want, when you need to pull the plug, you pull the plug. Don't wait. But yeah, Casimir and Cobain in the midfield. Bruno Fernandes as the number 10. Um, Right wing, I'm going with Ahmad Diallo. Left wing, I'm going with um, hmm, Rashford. Um, yeah, I'm going with Marcos Rashford. And up top, I'm going with Joshua Xerxes. Leave your starting um, starting events in the comment section below who we believe will be starting. My scoring prediction, I said that we will win this game. Maybe not convincing it, but I believe we will win this game. Tony. I don't think that's much of an ox. We win 2 0 against Southampton. Yeah. Let's be positive, man. And I'm this is not blind positivity. This is not toxic posit, posit, whatever you want to call it. I'm being positive because we need to come out of this ruckus that we're in right now. We lost our last two games. We lost our last we lost. We lost our last two. <laughs> we lost our last two games, bro. There is no reason for us to lose our third consecutive game. Now, I'm not saying that if we lose our third consecutive game, I'm going to fall out of the seat and drop down dead. But the fact is that with with the signs that we made this this in the, in the, in the, in the summer transfer window, we should not be losing this game. We should not be losing this game. And if we lose this game, God forbid, if we lose this game, everything Hog has questions to answer. He, had his, he got his signings in the summer. What the football person Ianos e- did in the summer, they did a perfect job. They gave us good signings. They didn't give us plan B signings. Let us make that clear. They gave us plan A signings. His own signings. The signings that the manager want. And uh, I guess you could say that Ianos e- made signings that the club needed. You know. So there's no excuse to use if we lose, when we lose this game. We have players. We have better players anyway. You know, judging based on player uh, against uh, Southampton, we should not be losing. We should not be losing this game. 
So yeah, my my prediction is that we win this game two 0 Clean sheet. I know it's a big ask for for Onano because having a clean sheet is a foreign concept to Onano, but we need a clean sheet. We need to win this game. I see you guys Saturday night for the match reaction. And hopefully, I'll be doing the match reaction of us winning this game and not losing or drawing or even potentially losing this game. We need to win this game. I'll show you guys next video podcast. Again, if you guys have been watching up until this point, like and subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments in the comment section. Your scoring predictions, your starting lineups, and click the bell as well. I notice that you guys are subscribing, but you guys are not clicking the bell. Click the bell so that you can be notified on each upload. Not some uploads, all uploads. With that being said, I see you guys in the next video podcast. The bell is out.